So good morning, everyone. It's my great pleasure to be here. So Marko Turpenen is my name, and uh, uh, indeed I'm coming uh, about two-hour uh, ferry ride north from here, from the uh, greater Helsinki area. And what I wanted to talk to you about today is is really what's going on in in the twin city of Tallinn, so uh, so in Helsinki, related to the developments around smart cities. Um, but I thought I would start with a very, very short introduction to my employer, which is EIT. I presume not all of you know what EIT stands for, so uh, very, very quickly. EIT is European Institute of Innovation and Technology. It's a major EU initiative uh, in Horizon 2020 program, which is currently up and running, the European program for research and innovation. So there is about 3 billion investment in EIT alone. So EIT connects uh, partners from across the, what's called knowledge triangle. So like <coughs> academia, research, and business entities working together around large societal challenges. The goal is to uh, educate entrepreneurial talent for Europe. Uh, the goal is to create new products, new, new, new innovations, especially deep technology and research-based innovations and move them to the market, and then help new companies to get started and scale them up. Um, and we are working, EIT is working in eight different areas, large, as said, global societal challenges where Europe feels that we can play a big role. Uh, climate, di digital and energy started in 2010, but for example, uh, urban mobility part of EIT started only a couple of months ago in 2019. So these different communities are also a little bit in different stages. And inside EIT Digital, so one of our theme has been for several years, smart cities, and more specifically quite, uh, you know, focused on some, some themes, citizen safety, urban mobility, and city analytics. And I will get back to some of these when I also go through the examples of what Helsinki is doing, because, for example, City of Helsinki is a partner of EIT Digital, one of the cities that is participating. So then going to the main topic, Smart Helsinki region. What does it mean? What's going on? I'm talking about the region uh, for a purpose as well, because it's not only city of Helsinki. My home city is called Espo, and uh, Espo is the next door neighbor to the west from the city of Helsinki. It so happened that last year, there was this global competition which is happening regularly by uh, an organization called ICF, and they selected the city of Espo as the most intelligent community of the year globally. And uh, well, you can ask me in works up what was it, were the reasons for Espo to be chosen, but this is one of the things that I want to highlight when we talk about Helsinki. So it's a smart, smart region. So several municipalities, four municipalities, working in close collaboration, but also healthy competition, at least in who wins the most prestigious awards. Now, going to the city of Helsinki itself. So this is the officially stated uh, vision of what Helsinki wants to be. Most functional city in the world through design, tech, digital, and dialogue. So it kind of combines several things that I find very, very Finnish. So there is appreciation of excellent design. There is sort of fascination on new technologies. There has been that for ages in Finland, not only for things digital. And, and there is this sort of idea that people are approachable and we should talk about and solve the issues through dialogue. And that's very, very, you know, typical to Finnish society. But the fourth key word that I have here, which is the most typical, is functional. So Finns are very impatient. If things don't work, we really want to solve the problem. We are a nation of problem solvers, and, and it shows here. So kind of, we are not ready to ex accept solutions that are only half-baked, or you know, that there are promises that they might work. Finnish citizens don't, you know, they just don't accept that. It's, it's not acceptable. Things should always work. And I think, you know, regarding to where things go also in 
digital government and governmental services, so I think that's an important principle. But also the city itself has taken this, this view that it can play an important role in kind of in several ways in getting things going. So it's enabling new things, it's sort of interconnecting different players, it kind of creates ecosystems, it, 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 it funds some things, but not to a large degree. In Finland, for example, the funding is much more happening from the, let's say, the, the, the nationwide funding programs and agencies like Business Finland. Um, but in many ways, so this whole story of you know, enabling change and enabling systemic change is something that the city, city of Helsinki has put as, as a key to what they want to do. And, and when you have these different stakeholders, so the citizens, of course, very important, but then the state, the, 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 the different other cities, the universities, so kind of the, that's the dialogue part. And again here, so it's not only Finland. So we've heard already a, a couple of times mentioned that Finland and Estonia, for example, are working in very, very close collaboration. And, and the city of Helsinki really sees itself as somebody who wants to reach out to the rest of the world and learn from each other, but also help others from lear to learn from them. That's very much sort of in the spirit of how the city wants to uh, develop itself. By the way, Forum Virium Helsinki, which is mentioned here, I borrowed this slide from them, is, is actually an entity which is fully owned subsidiary of the city of Helsinki. It has about 50 employees and really is sort of the digital change agent for the city. So when you want to try out new things, so Forum Virium is the place or the team that kind of really makes that happen, that, that Helsinki is approachable and, and, then, and then can do all of these experiments. And experimenting Helsinki does. So, uh, so they call this city as a platform. So, so there has been, since 2013, more than 300 different experiments on trying new things out, be it in education or health, health and well-being or energy or waste management. So various different areas and, uh, and, and sort of Helsinki wants to promote itself as a platform where you can try things out. So out of these, I picked one to show you a couple of really real examples. So um, the mobility one, smart mobility. And um, maybe starting with one of the stories that really got out there in the world. So there was this idea, and it actually started already with some very high level ministerial strategy of intelligent transportation in you know, mid-2000s, and there was a paper done by the ministry in 2009, 2010, that we should move much more into this new world where people don't own their cars, people, we, you don't need ownership in the city for mobility, you should be able to buy mobility as a service. And, and, and therefore, this whole concept has come about and now it also has been made real. So we have companies in the area of Helsinki that are providing a ticket or, or a subscription by mobility for 50 euros per month, and then it doesn't matter if it's public transportation or taxi or you know, bike that you're renting or even a rental car, maybe there's a little bit of additional fee for some of these, but the point is that you can, you know, for your mobility needs, one-stop shop. Sorry, that's a little bit uh, jumping ahead. Um, so that's the story of Mars. And I think that that's a good illustration, again, that it's not the city alone itself, but it's providing the platform, it's, provide, it's pushing the whole idea forward. And then having sort of commercial entities like Mars Global, which is a company that is now globalizing this idea of mobility as a service. Another area where Helsinki has been quite active has been robotic vehicles, automated vehicles. So it turns out that, that the... In Finland, the law says that uh, you always need to have a human operator when you have a vehicle on the streets, on traffic. But the human operator does not physically need to be in the vehicle. It's nowhere said that that's necessary. So you can have remote operation of vehicles on the street. That's legal. And so we've actually had fairly large trials of robotic buses already for several years in Finland. 
and now it's ready for deployment. So this particular bus here was launched a couple of months ago, and actually it's a collaboration between a Finnish startup called Sensible4 and a Japanese um, design retail company called Muji to come up with really nicely designed, cool robotic vehicle for the city. And we are expecting these to be actually roaming around the city this year. So that's one example, again, uh, companies pushing things forward, but this would not have happened if the city of Helsinki would not have said that, for example, this part of the city, we call it Smart Mobility Lab, and you can do all kinds of fun experiments there. Going back to one idea that we are doing as EIT Digital, where the city of Helsinki is involved, uh, uh, again, as a, as, a, as a platform to try things out, is not looking at people transformation or, 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 or moving things, uh, moving, moving people, but moving things. So uh, logistics, smart logistics in the city, involving uh, automated vehicles. So things like the bus that I just showed could also be moving goods. I picked here on purpose also this cute uh, wagon, which is delivering goods, which is actually an Estonian company called Starship Technologies. Starship is not yet involved in this particular activity, but it just shows that we are kind of getting close to actually the technology for robotic delivery in the city is there. But how do you connect these different modalities? I would love to see these Starship small wagons, for example, climbing to the bus and going to the right direction and then kind of being, uh, you know, put back to the sea, uh, street. But again, from the city point of view, so there is a clear goal. We want to have less congestion, you know, very uh, good goals of, you know, making logistic problems in the, in the city uh, uh, solved and go smoother. The other thing that I wanted to highlight, uh, in addition to the smart mobility work, is what Helsinki has been doing in the area of data. So I think this is cl clearly one of the keys. When you talk about the actually getting things out there and also really collaborating across different areas. So Helsinki was very early on, I think 2007 already launched this uh, uh, initiative called Helsinki Region InfoShare, which at that time was one of the first ones which really kind of said anything that can be opened up should be opened up. So it, it's an open data exercise, but this has actually resulted in thousands of applications, and one of them is Moss, WIM, which is mentioned here, which is an actual service that people can now buy. So it's using heavily all kinds of open data APIs that, that the city has provided. So it's, it really kind of is a big enabler also for commercial uh, services that are out there. But then uh, you definitely need this harmonization work. And again here, so city of Helsinki, but also other cities. So actually the paper on the left is a recommendation paper done by six cities in Finland together for all of you, all of us, to how to make a good API, so kind of recommendations for APIs. And, uh, and again, I think this is, it's a, it's a solvable problem. So we can actually find ways to create APIs that work across different, different countries, different muni municipalities. And also there is a movement called Open and a Agile Smart Cities, which is very active in this harmonization work. If you haven't heard of it yet, so please take a look. Uh, it, it really is sort of bringing people together and, and, and really working on this topic, of, for example, of harmonizing data across the cities. Another thing that I want, wanted to mention and uh, feel some proud myself because I've been very much involved from, in this from the beginning. So then you have the human data, the personal data. And we've been hearing a lot about the issues of privacy and EU is taking kind of definitely a, a leadership position there with things like GDPR. But the idea of my data is, well, how do we go beyond GDPR? How do we have more use? I want to have more data about me used everywhere, but I want to be in control. How do you keep the human at the center with the control of what's happening with my data and across different services? So if, you know, well, let's see, Facebook learns this about me, 
Well, it might be just fine as long as I know what they use it for and I can move this data and use it in some other service and not only social media, but something that might make sense of my data in, in what, what, what Facebook has captured. So this portability of data between services under the control of the user is really, really key here. So mydata.org, my take a look. It has actually now kind of really expanded from Finland and Estonia. Lots of co collaboration early on with Estonia. So there is something called My Data Global, chapters all around the world. So uh, take a look at that. Lastly, I wanted to mention a couple of things still to themes that we've been hearing quite a lot. So pre-commercial procurement, here is one example where, again, the city of Helsinki and Forum Virium as their agent organized a competition with EU funding on how to find, you know, again, good technical solutions that be, can be replicable in multiple different cities to solve certain problems. And, uh, and that activity was called Select for Cities. Uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to mention this here is that, well, one of the winners of this pre-commercial procurement is actually a company from our ecosystem in EIT Digital Engineering from, from, from Italy, and they have this solution that they call Digital Enabler or City Enabler. So that's a concrete pre-commercial procurement activity that's going on as we speak. Last time, last thing uh, I wanted to mention again, and I'm, I'm really again excited about this. So the news came out about a, a month ago that uh, there is a big initiative now between Helsinki and Tallinn to, Tallinn to move to the next level in terms of research and innovation around smart cities. So big funding, both from EU, but also locally here in Estonia, the government of Estonia, putting into a joint research center. And one of the outcomes, which is mentioned here on this slide, is to look into this question of cross-border data, cross-border urban portable you know, platforms, and how to make them really effective. Uh, so I'm really looking forward for the results of this work, which really are going to start in 2020. So we just got the good news. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, so I'm from EIT Digital, and I'm happy then to answer the questions, I guess, in the panel session a little bit later on. Thank you.